My name's Neil Patrick. I'm the Director of Marketing and Sales for Asia Pacific for Saab Training and Simulation. The simulation system itself consists of three key components. Simulators, exercise control and communication system. And what we're going to do now is step through those assets or those components of the system one by one. Firstly, we have, and importantly, the soldier system. Each soldier or individual that is instrumented wears what we call a personal detection device. This device has a communication system, a power system, four sensors on the back, detectors, four on the front, and a personal computer unit, which gives commands and acoustic feedback. Augmenting that, we also have this here. This is the halo, so this sits up on top of the combat helmet, like so, with a detector on the top, and it communicates with the vest by an inductive loop. That is to say, if the individual takes his helmet off, we will know that there's increases his vulnerability. To augment the soldier, of course, importantly, is his weapon system. This here is the BT-47 small arms transmitter, which fits on each individual's weapon. Fits on by a bespoke bracket and then is paired automatically to the vest. Every time a blank round is fired on the individual's weapon, this then sends a signal to the PDD, which then informs exercise control. If indeed the individual is hit, we can then, I'll demonstrate by means of this control gun, get various different effects on the individual. So for instance, a near miss, you get an acoustic sound from the PCU, which indicates the individual is coming under effective enemy fire circa one meter around him. He's not being hit. If I then do a wounded walking command on him, his PCU tells him, in this case, wounded right arm, and also augmenting his system, he has this item, an engagement feedback device. That gives visual, haptic, and acoustic feedback, dependent on the type of injury that the casualty has incurred. If I kill the individual, straight away again, different haptic, different acoustic, different visual indication. At that point in time as well, the weapon becomes disabled. So that is to say, his PCU will say weapon disabled. So it cannot fire a blank round. He's out of the exercise. To support the zeroing of the SAT, that is important of course, so the soldier is getting accurate fall of shot. We also have this item here. This is called a small arms alignment device. Very simple device, fits onto the end of the, the laser, and with that we zero it manually with a small tool to the actual weapon site. That then, everything is alignment and we can ensure that the weapon is being fired accurately. What we also have up here as well is our vehicle system. Okay, we have two types of vehicle system, a regular and a premium. A premium is more geared towards the main battle tanks, where we then require ballistic capability on main guns and coax guns firing at distance. The BT-47 SAT is for small arms engagement, circa out to about 600 metres, where time of flight is rel relatively unimportant. So this type of thing we'll put on a main battle tank, remote weapon stations, etc. We also have various types of detector that go around the vehicle, these being the regular and these being the premium detectors. Note these have prisms and that is to enable ballistic simulation from the compact ballistic laser that I've just shown you. To also augment capability, we have items like this. Fragmentation grenade, which again sends a short range radio effect to injure, kill, wound the soldier, or indeed for paramilitary or police organizations, items like this, the stun grenade, which doesn't have a kill effect, has a stun effect, and also both have flashbang smoke simulation effects in the bottom. We also have indoor capability. Now on the personal detection device, it has a GPS up on the top left shoulder. So what happens when we go into a building? We obviously lose GPS connectivity. 
in which case we then place these sensor systems around the building which detect where the PDD is and then sends information back to the exercise control where we can visualize where that individual is in a software model of the building. So that's assets for vehicles, soldiers, and we also have capability expansion packs, counter IED, CBRND, mortar, drone effects, and a various suite of other capabilities from the modern battlefield. So how does that information then get from the individual or the vehicle back to exercise control? In this case, we're demonstrating a small man pack capability. It's an expeditionary exercise control in this instance, we'll take 120 players. That means 100 soldiers, 20 vehicles, or a blend of each, up to a maximum of 120 entities. So all of these items are sending information back to the base station, which is then communicating with exercise control, visualizing the activity. All the data in XCON here is being harvested from all of these technical items, giving us information to draw back, in essence, to, uh, to conduct an after action review. That is really important because it enables soldiers to identify areas to improve, fix, sustain, develop tactics, techniques and procedures to train again, get better and ensure that their battlefield fit. Finally, we also have anti-tank weapons and other simulators that are paired to the individual and equally have an effect on our vehicle simulators or indeed buildings or other assets that we have instrumented. Here you can see Saab's latest generation Carl Gustav M4, a perfect identical replica in form, fit, function, weight, ergonomics. Note in this instance it has a laser, that being the BT-46 compact ballistic laser. What this enables by a scanning laser is replicating true ballistic simulation of the projectile from launch point to contact point on a vehicle, building or other target system. That then optimises training and ensures soldiers are training effectively and not incorrectly. So in summary, that is the Saab live instrumentation capability, extremely um, uh, inclusive of all asset, assets that we require on the modern day battlefield.